Hey guys, welcome to episode 15 of our weekly Super Smash Bros. Ultimate News Roundup, which means there's only 11 weeks left until the game is out. As usual, we're joined by Ash, Derek, and John to go over all the updates from the Smash Bros. blog and elsewhere from the past week. So let's get right to it. And the week starts off on day one, of course, being Sunday, with a character overview of Isabel, as if we haven't talked about her enough already. <laughs> However, it won't be a Smash Brothers blog first. There's actually new information here. So the character overview, or the, the new character overview reads, Isabel joins a battle from Animal Crossing New Leaf. She uses various trinkets from around the village to battle. Her side special, Fishing Rod, not only allows her to snag and bring opponents closer, it can also be used as a recovery move. So, so yeah, most of that we already knew, but the key thing there is the fact that she can use the fishing rod as basically a grappling hook, like the hook shot. So yeah, I guess that's pretty cool, Derek, because we saw no sign of that in the previous trailers, right? Yeah, there is there is nothing in there about the previous, but I did did bring up the fact that hey, maybe this is a possibility because usually when you have those moves that you throw things out and reel it back into you, uh, it usually leads to that kind of recovery move. So yeah, uh, Isabel's recovery is pretty dang good between the balloons and that fishing rod and it's actually kind of like the uh, villager himself because you know she can reel herself in and the villager just rides on the Lloyd to get back so they're both uh, quite good at recovery just slightly different now I'm curious whether my other prediction about the fishing rod where if you send it out and goes farther you can still catch him on the rebound is uh, true but it's nice to know the like the at least one observation was right about her. Yeah, this this seems to be the one move that really sets Isabel apart from Villager. I mm -hmm. mean, obviously there are there are other differences, but many many of her other moves are derivatives of Villagers, or at least some somewhat based on Villagers. But this move seems to be entirely her own, and to me seems to be the one that really does set her apart from Villager. And it's just one more move that makes me excited to play her over Villager. I'm not a big Villager fan, but I am really looking forward to playing Isabel. So I, I like how they've sort of changed how she works as a clone character, because lots of Echo characters have exactly the same moves or very different, um, very subtle changes. Whereas Isabel is wildly different in her aesthetic. Um, like Dr. Mario is basically just Mario with pills. Whereas Isabel <laughs> doesn't have all these violent uh, weapons like an axe. And we're always going back and forth in our predictions about how she would work as an Echo. Because some of us couldn't imagine her with all of these villager moves. So yeah, I love how they found this balance between clone and Echo. And she really does feel like something completely new all of her own. Yeah, I, all I know is that I absolutely want to see an Isabel main take Evo next year. I just do. I just, I just want to see this you said character. This twice now, you really want to see this. Apparently, oh, did I see it? Did I see it? I didn't even remember saying it last week. But yeah, I do. I, I absolutely want to see this character take Evo. I think that would be hilarious. Yeah. But no, I, I'm looking forward to playing as her, and I'm really glad that they set her apart with a move like the fishing rod. Which it is strange that I never would have expected Link's hook shot recovery to pop back up in Isabel's move set of all characters. Yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> either. It's a it is a fun touch though. Although I do wonder how practical it is, but maybe it's just me, but I almost never use those tether recoveries. Me neither. I kind <laughs> of do. Oh, do you? Um yeah, like, speaking of, um, of what Ash was saying about Isabel being at Evo, I wouldn't even feel mad to lose against Isabel. Like, if I lose to Daisy, <laughs> no. I'll be furious. If I yeah. lose to Isabel, <laughs> it's just cute. Like, just accept it. Like, how can you be mad losing to Isabel? That's yeah. so true. Yeah. I don't really use the tether recovery that, that often either. I was always kind of bad at it. I always miss my shot back in Melee when I actually did play as Link, and I'd be like, yes, let me go so close, and miss, and, and to the pit I go. But I, I kind of got better at it, because I kind of was forced to, because I did really like playing as Olimar in Brawl, and he only had a tether recovery, so kind of had to get good at it. And I, I don't use it a ton, but... It certainly has its uses as that sort of like last desperation move to me, at least, mm -hmm. or slightly safer way to get back onto the onto the uh, stage potentially, depending on how somebody's guarding it. I, I will say, and I, I know this is kind of evil to mention, but <laughs> Isabel has such great facial animations throughout her <laughs> entire trailer. It's like she's so emotive through a lot of her uh, moves, but we haven't seen her get hit yet. And I'm wondering how heartbreaking that's going to be to see her take a punch and, like, oh. is she going to have tears in her eyes oh, I <laughs> from hope that so. sort of oh, thing? No. Or, yeah. It's like, how, how much are they going to break our hearts with this? Because... Oh, it won't. It's going to be hilarious. That's what it's going to be. <laughs> oh, man. Because I, I know a lot of other cute characters are like, what What the hell? You you don't want to hurt this, this her, but you're fine with punching Kirby. The Pikachu, Jigglypuff cries, I think, right? Jigglypuff, maybe? Yeah, I'm not sure. yeah. Oh, it's going to be heartbreaking to have um, an Isabel versus Pichu match. Like, it's just cuteness versus cuteness. That's true. <laughs> that is true. 
All right, let's go ahead and move on to day two, being Monday, where we got an assist trophy for Shovel Knight. The description reads, Blue armor, horns, and a shovel. That's right, it's Shovel Knight. With his trusty shovel blade, you can bury an opponent in the ground or throw rocks as he digs. He may even dig up some food. So, Ash, obviously, you're the <laughs> biggest Shovel Knight guy in the world. Uh, what What's your reaction to... Uh, I mean, we've, heard, we've already heard your reaction before, but tell us more about why you're excited for Shovel Knight being in Smash Brothers Ultimate. Because it's Shovel Knight, man. <laughs> Blue armor, horns, and a shovel. That's right. It's Shovel Knight. No, I mean, I love this character, and I, of course, wanted to see him be playable, but... I always knew that was a long shot, and just the fact that we have an indie character in here as an assist trophy is really cool. And I think my favorite thing about Shovel Knight so far is much the same thing that I loved about Mega Man when he was first revealed, which is just how much they nailed his running animation and just the way he kind of jumps around and digs, and he just, he looks like he stepped right out of his own game. And that's always what I prefer to see with any, you know, mascot type character or well-known character getting into Smash. and. Yeah, you know, his assist, his, his assist trophy pops out, he starts running around, digging, and it just looks like he jumped right out of his own game. So, I love seeing Shovel Knight here, and yeah, I wish he was playable, but just the fact that he's here at all is really cool. So you're saying you dig Shovel Knight? <laughs> I, I am saying oh, I dig Shovel Knight, yes. <laughs> I kind of have bitterness towards Shovel Knight's cameos, because it feels like every game has Shovel Knight in some form, especially yeah. every indie game. Uh, I was looking on the wiki, and he must have, like, he must be in over 30 games at this Jeez. point. And I think when you keep putting a character as a cameo, it kind of devalues how special it is when they make it into another game. Um, I mean, it's, it's of course very special to have this indie character in Smash, but just as a general, um, I wish they would be a little less lenient with how often they lend Shovel Knight to other games. But I, I guess Smash is an exception for this. You're saying Shovel Knight's a little bit too easy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. You're you're actually I'm I'm kind of I kind of agree with you, John, because he does pop in every, everywhere. Yeah. He's in ukulele, Blade Strangers, uh, you know, Rumbo, the, the, and, Rivals uh, of Ether. Yeah. yeah. Name an indie game, and he's likely cameoing it in some way. Some are better than others, and I mean it's great to see how prolific the character is that people want them in the game, and then he does become his own sort of selling point. But when you get something like this, it's like, oh, okay, Shovel Knight's in the game. That's cool. And then when it should be this really major thing, because it's not just, you know, he's in Smash Brothers. But as you said, he's in so many other stuff. It's like, eh, okay, just another appearance for Shovel Knight. And that's kind of a shame to feel that way, because he is. this is a very important inclusion. It's not only an indie game, it's an American indie game. Uh, and that's right. huge to get in, into Smash. Um, it's just, eh, it's not so good to see him be so prolific in this case when it comes to um, cameos and Easter eggs. Although I will say, I will agree with Ash. I love the way he looks in this. It's probably one of his best 3D models that we've seen. Because uh, mm -hmm. I, I saw his gameplay in Blade Strangers, and he looks so weird in that. <laughs> he really <laughs> does. Me. Yeah. I, 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 it was, it's honestly, an un, it was weirdly unappealing to me. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Well, because he's, like, yeah. big and beefy in that game. It's really weird. Yeah, he, he sort of loses this inherent, I don't know, cuteness to him, and I think yeah. Smash keeps that for him. Yeah, I, I do hear you guys about the about how prolific he's been and, and how many different cameo appearances he's had, and that is true. I just think that, for me, that didn't dull the, the luster of him being announced as an, as an assist trophy in Smash, because it's Smash. Like, yeah, you have all these other cameo appearances, and that's great, but next to Smash, they, they don't mean nearly as much, whereas Smash is like, that's the golden goose right there. So, I don't know, I do see what you're saying, and, and, and I, I agree with it to an extent, but this is Smash Brothers, and to see him in Smash is just its own cool thing, in my opinion. Uh -huh. it, it is weird to compare, um, to complain about cameos in the game full of cameos. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. True. Yeah, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and move on to day three, being Tuesday, where we got a new music track based on the title theme of Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer. So, Ash, do you want to give us the quick rundown on this one? Sure, so this was rearranged by Kazumi Totaka, who is a very well-known composer and sound director at Nintendo, who's known for his work on uh, various games such as Super Mario Land 2, uh, Link's Awakening, Mario Paint, Luigi's Mansion, and various Animal Crossing games. And he has contributed uh, works to Smash Brothers in the past. In Brawl, he contributed the rearrangements of the title theme from, it says Animal Crossing, the, the song title, but it's actually from Animal Crossing Wild World, it's a bit misleading. Uh, also, The Roost from Wild World, and then from Smash 4, he contributed both remixes of the Wii Sports Resort theme. 
And just a little trivia for you is that he is actually the, the person who provided the voice samples for Yoshi during the development of Yoshi's story, in effect making him the voice of Yoshi, and he's also the voice of Professor Egad and Birdo. Uh, you also left out the key part about Totaka's song being in. Well, th 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 I have that here too, I just didn't want to go on for too long, but yes. To <laughs> so there's also Totaka's song, which is a simple 19-note tune that uh, basically Totaka himself has inserted into random places in many of the games he's worked on, such as Link's Awakening and Mario Paint. But so not Smash actually, Brothers yet, I think, right? Not right. not Smash Brothers yet, yeah. Uh, we need, we that. need like a Totaka's medley or something, right? <laughs> that, have all the oh, variants stuck together. <laughs> oh, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> and I guess I do have one other thing here, and that is that the Animal Crossing character, because we're already talking about Animal Crossing, K.K. Uh, Slider is actually based on Totaka. That's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, this seems to be a very fitting, um, I mean, it's... I mean, I love any remix from this guy, then, and that continues with this one. This this <laughs> remix in particular sounds... It barely sounds close to the original source material. Um, yeah. I went back to the original track, and it sounds like Yoshi's New Island by comparison, whereas this track has, like, a hard rock edge to it, at least <laughs> <laughs> starting <laughs> off. And I love that. It's barely recognizable, and it sounds really good. It's just really catchy to me. Yeah, I agree. I, I was not expecting, like, a hard rock take on any Animal Crossing song. I didn't even know I wanted that <laughs> yeah. until I heard this, and I'm like, what is that? actually really cool and i didn't even play happy home designer and i'm like this is really cool so i'm a big fan of this yeah i kind of want mm -hmm. animal crossing switch whatever it ends up being to have a soundtrack entirely along the style <laughs> me too i'm 100 there with you i have played happy home designer i can guarantee you ash this is the best thing about it <laughs> this, this title theme i nice. yeah that game was not for me but i remember i just listened to this shortly before because i just completely forgot to listen to it uh when it came out and I listened to this the first time, and yeah, I agree with you. It's like, wow, what's with this hard, this like sort of harder rock edge to it that makes this game, this song way more badass than it has any right to be? Like, what the heck? And like every other Animal Crossing song in Smash is pretty loyal to the actual Animal Crossing source material. Mm -hmm. uh, like, it's always calm, it's always relaxing, whereas this is going to seem so jarring compared to all of those. I love it, but it's going to seem so <laughs> weird. All right, well, let's go ahead and move on to the second update for the day, being a stage overview of On It. The description reads, Nessa's hometown is a drugstore in the middle and houses on either side. Watch out for cars entering the stage from the right, they can hit you for 30% damage. So, yeah, On It has probably been one of my favorite stages, um, at least in uh, Smash Bros. Melee when it was introduced, and it's a, been a favorite for me to go back to over the years. I think my favorite thing about this stage, I mean, I, I agree with you, Andre, this is one of my favorite stages to come back to, I love it, but one of my favorite things here is that we actually have comparison screenshots that we're looking at between Melee, Brawl, Wii U, and Ultimate. And I love how this this color of the sky changes in each iteration of the stage. Yeah, like that's seriously, a good point. yeah, like the 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 sky is a completely different gradient of blue from Ultimate compared to Smash Wii U. It's just very interesting to see. But well, you know why? There's no like source material for what the sky should look like. I know. You can see the sky and on it. So. <laughs> no, that's a perfectly good point. It's true. And uh, but I, I really do like the contrast with the with the shade of blue in the Ultimate version yeah. and. Well, the upgrade, the upgrade in general looks fantastic. Yeah. Like, again, like, like every yeah. other stage has been upgraded significantly, at least uh, compared to the other older stages, and I love the detail here. It looks really nice. I think colors are the main focus of this upgrade. Like, if you look at all the houses um, and, like, the backgrounds and the skies, everything's just, like, a, a richer shade than, than it's ever been in any, mm -hmm. any previous Smash game. And then there's the smaller details, too. Uh, the windows now look like actual windows rather than just this weird blue texture. And the flowers are now actually 3D rather than 2D textures. So, yeah, there are a lot of subtle changes, and it does kind of look the same at a glance. But when you're comparing them, it, it just pops so much more. It's way more vibrant. And um, even the background, like, there's more houses going on in the background. Right. Uh, everything just stands out a bit more. Yeah, I agree. Those damn cars, though. <laughs> I hate <laughs> those cars. The cars could be a lot of fun, though. It's, it's oh, so they are. Fun to like knock somebody down there just as a car is going by and see them get whipped around him. or when you're uh, you're at high percentages and you get hit by the car and you get knocked into the the uh, left building and get, sort of get caught underneath the awning there yeah like, there's some weird things that can happen in, in this stage and i think that makes it just all the more fun agreed i think part of why i liked on it a lot was because it felt like to me the most fleshed out version of a town that we or uh, of a of a, an area from a game we'd never seen in 3D before. Like, they really did make this feel like a real town. When, in Earthbound, they already did a great job selling that effect only in 2D from a top-down perspective, of course. So uh, this felt like just a great realization of 
um, how that stage would appear in 3D. And it really still makes me long for when we thought Earthbound 64 was going to hit, and we never, yeah. never got uh, it. Yeah. That, that's a great point, though, because in this stage, you can see the meteorite um, right at the top of the mountain, mm -hmm. which is, of course, from Earthbound. Those two houses in the background are also directly pulled from Earthbound. So even the background locations basically match up with the source material. Yeah. And that's so cool. It is great. Yeah, I think the house on the left, that would be Liar Exaggerate's house, right? Right, yeah, it's, yeah. Even, the right, it's even the right shape. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's so cool. That is such a Sakurai touch, I love that. And of course, I love the music as well in on it. Oh yeah. Alright, let's go ahead and move on to the next day, being day four, Wednesday, where we got a character overview of Ganondorf. The new description reads, His new design matches his appearance in The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Now he uses a sword for all the smash attacks. He's a bit slimmer than he was before, but his warlock punch is devastating. For his final smash, he transforms into Ganon and the Demon King and quickly charges forward. So yeah, Ganondorf is back, but this time with quite a few differences, as the description already kind of teased. Um, I mean, he got a visual overhaul. Now, uh, even though they call it a new design, um, he also had a similar design in Smash Brothers Melee, where, where he was based on Ocarina of Time, whereas in the subsequent Smash Brothers games, he was instead based on his Twilight Princess appearance. So Ganondorf started off, of course, as a clone, or semi-clone, I suppose, of Captain Falcon, and over the years, he's had more and more changes given to him that make him stand, to make him stand out more as an individual character, and that definitely continues with Smash Brothers Ultimate, um, both, both as the description already touched on, but also some key points I wanted to draw upon, or touch upon, based on the Smash Brothers Wiki, which has an excellent overview of all the changes and tweaks they've noticed so far about Ganondorf, and there's a lot of them. But some of the main ones I noticed are the fact that, uh, for one, his opening entrance animation is now a little bit different, where he steps out from a vortex of darkness, which is pretty cool looking. <laughs> um, his up tilt is now significantly faster and has less ending leg, which to me sounds like it's going to be brutal, because that move was already powerful before it could land it. So, with it being faster, man, you better watch out for that thing. Of course, as the description touches on, all of his smash attacks are now quite different using his sword. And apparently that sword, by the way, is a sword he used in the original Space World demo that was used for the GameCube way back in 2001 uh -huh. that we never saw realized as an actual huh. game. And finally, as a blog also touched on, his final smash, being his Ganon form, is now different too, being based on Ocarina of Time, where he's now bipedal with both his swords pulled out, and he charges across the screen. So, yeah, so Gandor is kind of, in a way, more different than ever before, while... Um, while also being a little bit more truer to his melee appearance, at least uh, in appearance. What do you think of how he's looking in Smash Brothers Ultimate? Such a good upgrade. Uh, I am totally sick of Twilight Princess designs. <laughs> I hate that we've had two Smash games with the same Link, Zelda, and Ganondorf. I'm just mm. sick of it. Uh, and Ganon looks so good here. And it's always been a bit of a tease with his sword. Like, in Brawl, one of his taunts, he just goes, Heh! and then puts his sword away. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Whereas now it's actually part of his moveset. And I played as Ganon quite a bit in my time with Smash, and his sword, his smash attacks feel so good. And he's always been kind of a weird character, because of all characters to make a clone of, why Captain Falcon for Ganondorf? Mm -hmm. um, but these these smash attacks really do make him feel a bit more a bit more of his own. Um, and yeah, he he just looks great. He feels great. He's a lot faster. He's more agile than he's ever been. And I love I've always loved his Ocarina of Time design, and they've done it justice so well here in Ultimate. Yeah, part of me was hoping uh, his Hyrule Warriors de Warriors design would be used way before we knew what Ultimate was going to be, just because he did use his sword attacks and he'd be so much different. And it was it's great to see them step away from the Twilight Princess design. I mean, it's fine for it's fine. It has its uh, fans and all that, but it's always been a little too chunky. And I like this lean, mean Ganondorf that we got here. That is truly threatening. And his beast form is so much better for his fa final smash. Like they get that threatening form from Ocarina of Time out, swords drawn in, rushing across the screen. That is great. That is really good stuff. And it's amazing how much it just he feels changed up just because he can actually pull out his sword for all of his smash attacks. And it works so much better for him. He actually feels, just from a, a match or two that I had with him, he feels so much more unique than he ever has before. Which is kind of funny given the fact he's yet another sword character now. <laughs> <laughs> Kinda, yeah. <laughs> sword and punching. <laughs> it really is all about that sword. I mean, that that it, it's funny that you say that, Andre, because it's true. It does make him yet another sword character. But... It also makes Ganondorf feel like Ganondorf for the first time, maybe ever in this series. Like it just, it Ganondorf feels like his own character now, and not just an, a weird offshoot of Captain Falcon. And that's a huge change. And so I'm excited about that. Personally, I'm not a big Ganondorf main. I don't play big, chunky, heavy characters. However, as we were talking about, Ganondorf has been made more agile this time around. So I may have to check him out a little more. 
but uh, it's just great to see him getting this redesign and getting finally getting his sword for smash attacks that sakurai finally you know acknowledging the fans who have been wanting that for so long and yeah ganondorf's looking great and i'm uh, i will say that i am still a little sad it's not his hyrule warriors design I, that's still my favorite design of ganondorf and i was still kind of holding out hope we might get that but if we can't get that getting this version of ganondorf to use his sword is the next best thing in my opinion so yeah. It'd be interesting if we do, because we've just found out that Yoshi has a um, a crafted world um, skin. Right. So maybe Ganondorf can have different uh, iterations of himself in his skins. Ooh. That would be sick. I mean, if we're doing if we're doing that, honestly, I want to I want to Ganondorf. Me I too. Love yeah. Ganondorf. Yes, same here. <laughs> that would be pretty great. Yeah. Although I think I would it's substantially not change a hitbox for him. <laughs> yeah, no, it wouldn't happen. Yeah. Plus, he has like two swords, so I, like that that wouldn't you know he has his own kind of dual wielding thing that he's got going on. Right. Yeah. When you, when you think of Ganondorf, though, he doesn't really use swords that often. Like Wind Waker is really the exception. I mean, he does in Twilight Princess as well. But apart from that, Ganondorf usually, like, I think in Link to the Past, he fights with a spear, if I'm mm -hmm. correct. Um, in Ocarina of Time, he never uses a sword. So, yeah, it's kind of interesting they had to take it from a tech demo just to feature it in Smash. <laughs> well, and, yeah, to clarify, you meant he uses a spear as Ganon in uh, oh, in, right, Link to yeah. the Past, right? Uh, uh -huh. Ganondorf is not in the Link to the Past, as amazing as that might be. Um, <laughs> so... I, yeah, it, it is kind of weird that they're introducing a sword now when they're reverting to, an, a, to a design in which he didn't use a sword, at least in Ocarina of Time, as in Ganondorf form. Um, and that kind of brings up another point that I, I'm kind of mixed, actually, on his redesign. Um, like, I think, on the one hand, it is kind of cool they're going back to the Ocarina-style design, by far, probably his most, you know, one of his uh, more well-known designs. Um, and I love the new form of Ganon. But I also feel like I think they've actually improved his model over the years. I actually, even though I'm not a huge Twilight Princess fan, I think that design's better, honestly. I think it looks more menacing, looks a little bit tougher. I think as a big, heavy character, he should be bigger and heavier. And I think going back to the Ocarina style, Ganondorf, he looks just kind of like a punk now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I I'm seeing that. He has he has this sort of spiky hair thing going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but I see you got some mean. 90s tood in there. <laughs> yeah, but he's got those weird braids with Twilight Princess with his hair piece. I don't know. I, I, yeah, he's chunkier, but I don't know. I never really felt it for that. And, and granted, I, I probably would pick a different design as well. Uh, like Ash, if I was going for the realistic design, I'd probably go with Hyrule Warriors because that is a really great one. My favorite Ganon is, of course, Toon, Zan uh, Toon Ganon, but that's mm -hmm. never going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a weird one. Although, yeah. a nice thing about the Hyrule Warriors is that one of his alt weapons in that game is a spear, so it would have been kind of cool to like get that spear moveset, but they're not going to give Ganondorf a completely new moveset. It's actually kind of amazing we got what we did as far as changes for him. I can't stop picturing this Ganondorf just trying to like, pay, like um, spray a car now or something, just being a punk, just <laughs> skateboarding down the road. Yeah. <laughs> I'm totally picturing him driving around in Crazy Taxi to the Offspring music, picking up Hasbro. Oh, man. I can see it. I can see what right? you mean. I, I, I will say I do I do still like that, though, more than his Twilight Princess design. I just think he looks more menacing here. Like, it, his Twilight Princess design is fine, but I do see what you mean, Andre, about him looking more like a punk here, but I still think he looks more evil here. Just That's so menacing. interesting, because, like, I, I don't see that anymore. Like, really? Yeah, I, I can't get past the punk look of him. Like, it just... I Fair enough. I can't quite take him seriously compared to his Twilight Princess design, <laughs> so... He, he looks like a no BS dude in the Twilight Princess. In Ocarina of Time, he looks like you can maybe grab a beer with him or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to grab a beer with Ganondorf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and move on to the final day of the week, being day five, uh, Thursday, where we got character overview for Pikachu. Uh, the character description reads, This fierce fighter uses electric moves like Thunder Jolt and Thunder. Pikachu Libre is also one of the alternate costumes, and you can tell she's female by the shape of her tail. So, yeah, Pikachu is actually one of my original mains, uh, going back to the original Smash Brothers 64, and I've already had a ton of fun with Pikachu in Smash Brothers Ultimate. And that might be why uh, more of these key points I wanted to pull out from the Smash Wookiee stood out to me for some of these differences here. So, among them, we have, of course, uh, the female Pikachu already touched on. Uh, now, Pikachu also always faces the same direction, regardless of which, of which way they're facing, um, which is pretty interesting in that it now uh, gives a mirrored appearance to all of its moves. So, that's kind of cool. Uh, its forward tilt now has an electric effect. Uh, Pikachu ha also has a new neutral aerial. Its down aerial now has a meteor smash effect, which I'm going to love. <laughs> uh, its quick attack now has an angle indicator to telegraph where exactly it's going to be warping to. 
Um, so that should be interesting. I wonder if that might help people looking to avoid it. Or maybe just helping someone learn how Pikachu works in the first place. <laughs> and finally, it's Final Smash. Like most Final Smashes, I've seen some uh, changes um, with you, I think, not having any control of it at all anymore. Yeah, so that's Pikachu in a nutshell. Um, I don't know if you guys ever made them as much, or made them as, much as I did. What do you think of uh, these changes? You were one of those jerks that were always spamming thunder, weren't you? That's the only way I play Pikachu. Pikachu. <laughs> oh, man. In terms of Pikachu's design, uh, I think people often focus on him getting uh, slimmer over the years, but he's also gotten lighter over the years. And if you look at him in, like, Let's Go Art, he's quite pale compared to what he used to be. And I, I, I kind of see that coming through in Ultimates. Like, he's a, he's, a more, um, he's a lighter shade of yellow than he's ever really been. And I'm not sure I really like it. Yeah, I, it, it, we're looking at a comparison screenshot from Wii U and Switch right now, and he's so much more vivid in the Wii U version. Like his, like, or I should say, its yellow hue is much more, just is much fuller and more vivid in the Wii U version. Whereas, he, yeah, like Pikachu definitely takes kind of a like a paler appearance here in Ultimate, and it seems to be based, as you said, John, on on its appearance in Let's Go, but. I agree. I'm not sure I'm as much of a fan. Yeah, I, I get what you mean. It, it's almost like they muted him just a little too much. I, I don't think I notice it as much when it's an action, but when you can see it like this, you can just really see how much less yellow he is. I, I'm kind of curious with the, the whole trajectory thing for Quick Attack. I wonder if that would make it easier to punish. Like, I wonder if, if, if your opponent will be able to kind of more easily predict now where Quick Attack is going to leave Pikachu. Because I think I think Pikachu goes into free fall after doing a quick attack. He does, so, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, so I wonder if that'll make it easier to punish. It's just a quick move. Like, I can't see really it's helping. True. Well, what much. if, like, Bayonetta uses Witch Time, and then... Um, oh! She, th th that would just completely change That's a good the dynamic. Point. Oh, <laughs> man. That's a great point, actually. That would totally change the, the, the dynamic. Yeah. Most of these changes sound good to me. I think it's cute that he now faces the screen, even if it's unnecessary. I had no problems with that before. But sure, <laughs> Pikachu always looks at the screen now. That's cool. It reminds me a little bit of uh, Ryu. Um, and also, the fact that he plays Pikachu, uh, or as a female Pikachu, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, all the costumes are really cool. Like yeah. uh, in the past, Pikachu's just kind of worn hats, and it's not really <laughs> been uh, the most exciting. So it's super cool. Oh man, there's these special Pikachu's that are dressed up as the leaders from the various teams, and there's one of him dressed up as Giovanni, so he has the full-on suit and the rose huh. and the evil look. I want that as a costume. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> great. Yeah. Just in general, I, I'm not a Pikachu main personally, but I do like playing Pikachu, and I'm just, of course, happy to see Pikachu back. One thing I do like to do with Pikachu is to catch opponents with its back air, because it hits like a billion times, and it's like, that's the one where Pikachu spins around. Oh, it's and so just, satisfying. It's, yeah, it's if you land so, one. Oh, it's such, it's like the, one of the most satisfying moves to land in Smash Brothers, in my opinion, and mm -hmm. I, I hope that that move hasn't been changed too much here in Ultimate, but yeah, it's, you know, Pikachu. It's Pikachu. How could you not love the Pikachus here? He's an icon, and I'm yeah. he or she is an icon, and I'm happy to see it back. Uh, he is, uh, yeah, he or she is one of the, or is the original Pokemon to represent yeah. Smash Brothers, beating Jigglypuff, who was an unlockable. Mm -hmm. Plus, mm -hmm. most importantly, Party Hat Pikachu is back, and that is important <laughs> to me, because I love Party Hat Pikachu. Yeah. Yeah. Also, when um, when Kirby eats a Pikachu, he gets, like, a, um, a Pikachu hat with a spiky tail on the end, and I wonder if that will be a heart if you eat a female Pikachu. Ooh, that'd be a cool attention. It wouldn't surprise yeah. me if it was, yeah. I'm just excited to play more Pikachu. Like I even though I've I've transitioned to Game of Watch over the years, being my primary main, Pikachu's still my fallback. He has been my boy, now my girl, <laughs> since the original. <laughs> and I can't wait to use more of them in, in Smash Brothers Ultimate. So because I've I've really enjoyed how they felt so far. Just always a fun one to use, particularly with that amazing um down special, which is just the best. Yeah. <sighs> oh, God. <laughs> we'll just sigh. <laughs> Pikachu's also a pretty good Mega Man counter, I found, so... Oh, have you now? I have to look into that now. Or I think, I mean, I've, I used it against you, and I think uh, it performed pretty well, so... Did you? Okay, okay. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to look into to Pikachu, countering Pikachu with Mega Man, but, uh... <laughs> but I just, I'm just, I just, all I can hear when you talk about Thunder is, Pika! Pika! <laughs> over and over again, and it's just, ah, uh, I know, right? All right, so that brings us to the end of the week, but we're not done yet because we still, we still have to answer one of the questions from you guys, and more specifically our Patreons, where just for $1 a month, you can uh, back us on Patreon, where you get early access to our podcast, as well as the ability to submit us questions, in which we'll answer one of them once a week, as I just said. So this week, our question comes to us from Sean uh, BC, is that right? 
I think BZ. Yeah. BZ? Yeah. All right. Hopefully I got that right. Apologies if I if I didn't. Uh, they ask, considering both Isabel and Ganondorf were featured on the Smash Brothers blog this week, and both are kind of semi-clones, which characters do you think would make a good semi-clone, even if they aren't realistic? Echo Fighters are one thing, but it seems like a semi-clone has more than just one or two moves, or it's just a whole different vibe than the character they are copying. So, yeah, I think I think Sean may be on something here, at least certainly in the case of Isabel, who uh, definitely doesn't feel too villager-esque, despite very clearly being based on it to some, you know, to some extent. So, yeah, what do you guys, um, I guess, what are you guys' hopes for uh, for future Echo, or future semi-clones, I should say, F future semi-echoes? <laughs> First of all, I think it's really interesting that we're getting um, semi-clones, because uh, Nintendo, or Sakurai's gone out of his way to make this whole category of clones called Echoes, right? And it, it, it seems, seems kind of weird to then, then like go against that and go back and like revert back to the old clone format. Um, but in terms of a character, I'm thinking about we've mentioned Shadow a lot, and I think there are some moves you could change and make him a semi-clone. So first of all, give him a gun. <laughs> no, no, actually, what, what I really meant to say is, first of all, we could like, have Chaos Control uh, as his recovery, like having teleport around rather than use the spring. Um, in fact, they probably could sneak a gun into Shadow. It's kind of a big part of his character now. So <laughs> give him like a rocket launcher or something. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head. I mean, Dr. Luigi. <laughs> he could have nice. Dr. Luigi in there. Although I don't think that would be as interesting or fun. Um, honestly, I think if we could find a way to get a character like, okay, uh, a, a semi-clone of Ike. Have it be Hector from um, Fire Emblem uh, Game Boy Advance. That way you actually get an axe user in this game. Or some other Fire Emblem mm -hmm. character that does not use a, a sword. But axes are close enough. It can make it work. And it's, he's already a heavy character. So change up how his axe moves or whatnot. You can give him a ranged attack by having him be able to use a throwing axe. Uh, which already are basically boomerangs in the game. Like You could really change it up. And Hector is a fan favorite. Uh, at least among the Fire Emblem crowd, so yeah, I think I'd want Hector the most. I think he would make a real like make a lot of sense. Of course, everybody would be upset because we got another Fire Emblem characters, but I don't <laughs> care about those guys. <laughs> uh, one that I'm have in mind that uh, is kind of you know obvious to me, but also I'm surprised really hasn't happened is Proto Man for Mega Man. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like that is such an obvious choice, and it seems like it's not going to happen because Proto Man is now in Mega Man's Final Smash, but. There are slight meaningful differences between the way Mega Man and Proto Man play in games like Mega Man 9 and 10, where Proto Man can only have two pellets on screen at once instead of Mega Man's three, so that change could be brought over into Smash, where maybe each individual pellet is a little more powerful, but he can only have two active, active at once. Same thing with like his shield. When he jumps, he could bring his shield out, which protects him from frontal projectiles, but maybe, you know, uh, in return, he takes more damage or knockback because that's what happens in Mega Man 9 and 10. He actually does take double the knockback and double the damage that Mega Man does. So there are little tweaks and little differences that they could do to Proto Man to make him a semi-clone of Mega Man that would just have just enough differences from Mega Man to make him feel meaningfully different, but also just work as a clone for Mega Man, because he's literally the same proportions and everything, at least sometimes he is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that could totally work. Um, I, I guess a way around him being in the Final Smash is simply not having him in the Final Smash if yeah. Proto Man is playing in the stage. Which I would love to see that happen. I really, I'm kind of surprised that Proto Man isn't, or hasn't happened, or, or looks like he isn't happening, just because he seemed like such an obvious clone, but perhaps not. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame too, because it's really funny, is Proto Man would be a, a great anti-Mega Man choice, <laughs> going up against yeah. Mega Man, just, alright, I'm pulling out Proto Man, mm. this should do the trick. <laughs> right, well, at least when he's in the air, because he usually only pulls out a shield in the air, but that would be an interesting, that would just be a cool face-off to see in general, in Smash Brothers context. So, a semi-clone or semi-echo, I would love to see, and we've touched on this before, but uh, more, in ex more in the topic of being an echo, and I think a semi-echo would be more fitting, actually, or semi-clone. Dixie! Yes! I would love to see yes. Dixie Kong in this game, and I think being a semi-clone would be a better way of doing it, which should retain some of Diddy's moves, but change them up. Um, of course, the main thing would be the recovery, get rid of the rocket barrel instead of have her hair spin. And even in Tropical Freeze, like it, it, the, it, the way it worked in that game would be perfect for Smash, where it kind of like dipped and then came back up. Uh, they yeah. give her like the uh, the little pop gun she uses um, with different attributes than how Diddy's peanut gun works. 
I was thinking, in, instead of the peanut gun, she could like have a guitar and have it charge up, and when you and when you unleash oh. it, like it gives like a wave of sound, just like <laughs> it's the. You beat me! You beat me that to it. Be I was gonna propose that for our final smash, but oh. I like your idea better. Actually, it should be a primary move because that's just a, such a distinctive part of her character, at least in the original game. Um, yeah, Diddy never got his boombox. Dixie deserves her guitar. So <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. and I feel like she could do something with bubble gun. I feel like there's oh yeah, she could do. yeah. Well, I mean that could be her, I mean that could be a taunt. That'd be the easiest way to fit. That's it in true. There. Or a recovery. What if she like blew a? I mean, what doesn't actually make sense? But like, what if she blew that a bubble? Of her hairspin though. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. You'd have to have the hairspin mm, as. Yeah, well. hair I was thinking of that as an hair. attack. I was thinking she can use that as a primary attack as well. But you, well, that's true. I mean, that's, that recovery. would be kind of cool if she charged. If he's charged up, like blew a bigger bubble and spit it across the screen. That would be cool too. Uh -huh. Yeah, then, uh, Dick, we, we we all kind of want Dixie in. In our predictions, we're always mentioning Dixie, but the 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 blow to that has always been that she can't really be a Diddy Echo. Um, but now it seems like Echoes aren't necessarily the only way to get these clones in anymore. So it seems so possible now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder if Sephiroth could work as a Cloud clone, because technically some of their moves are similar, but then there's also a lot of a lot of moves that they don't really share. Um, yeah. I think we've, we've said in the past that Zack would be a more fitting Cloud Echo or clone, but um, it'd be really cool to have Sephiroth in, just have this, this villain versus heroes vibe, like, fully completed. Um, but yeah, th I guess their moves are a bit too radically different. Yeah, as much as I love the idea of having Sephiroth as kind of like the, you know, the counterpart to Cloud, I think it beggars belief to think that they could actually have that many of the same moves, just because their fighting styles are so wildly different, and their swords are so different. Clouds is big and chunky and oversized, and, and Sephiroth is the Masamune, and it's super thin and super long, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just don't think that that could work, personally. I just, as much as I want to see Sephiroth, and I do, I don't think, I don't think Sephiroth would work as a Cloud semi club Actually, uh, what I think I've always wanted, and I think would be really cool, is, and I think John's mentioned it in the past as well, another Pokemon trainer, like the, mm. oh like yeah, the Johto trainer or the Hoenn trainer or any of the trainers where you have the three starters and you just change it up a bit. And I think for the most part, you can keep uh, the water and grass Pokemon the same as far as what their their move sets are. Uh, they they functionally similar to um, Squirtle and. Uh, Ivysaur, but Charizard is definitely the harder one just because of its fl uh, ability to fly. But you know, you get in uh, like Blaziken, for example, and all of a sudden you have this like combat focused fire type, and uh, with all the like crazy fighting moves or any of the other <laughs> fire fighting types that we got throughout the series uh, for mm -hmm. uh, starters. I think that'd be, I don't know, I, just, I find that really cool to, to just see some of the other starters get some uh, time in the limelight. I'd love that. <clears throat> I mean, yeah. there, there are already quite a lot of, of Gen 1 Pokemon in this game. Like we have uh, Pikachu, Mewtwo, uh, Charizard, Squirtle, Ivysaur. It's quite a long list. Um, uh -huh. So I, I would definitely love to see just one character just fulfilling all these different... Just like just an entirely different generation. Because I don't think we have any Gen 3 Pokemon in uh, in Smash, do we? No, I don't, I don't believe so. Yeah, I don't think so. So that would be a really nice gen to, to fill up with a Pokemon trainer. Mm-hmm. Or Gen 5. <laughs> no, or Gen, you know, Gen 5, yeah. Speaking but. of Pokemon, just because I, I think the, the design of this Pokemon is so ridiculous that I want to see it in Smash, I would love to see Iglybuff as a semi-clone for Jigglypuff. Just give Iglybuff like, even higher airspeed than Jigglypuff. Just just make it smaller and faster than Jigglypuff, <laughs> but maybe the rest isn't quite as strong or something. But I would love to see Iglybuff playable in Smash. <laughs> oh my oh, god. Man. Imagine like a Pichu versus Iglybuff versus Isabel <laughs> match. Like... <laughs> Just totally. want to be able to look. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Alright, any other echoes we want to see? Or semi-echoes? Hmm. I will say this. Um, Ken. I would like to see Ken get in as an echo for Ryu. I think, you know, that it makes sense as a semi-clone because you could they, they're both Shotokan characters. They literally both have the Haruken, Tatsumaki, Senpukiaku, and the Shoryuken. And you could just give Ken Shoryuken a fire effect because that's what he does. Mm -hmm. And may, maybe make his Haruken a little weaker because Ryu's specialty is the Haruken. And there you go, you've got Ken. But personally, in my opinion, yes, I know Ryu is Mr. Street Fighter. He's Mr. Fighting Game. But I always preferred Ken. I just always liked Ken as a character more. And I do think he's like 99.9% .9 as important as Ryu. So get mm. Ken in there. And like, I know some people were saying, get evil Ryu in there as a, as a semi-clone <laughs> for a clone for Ryu. No, not no. evil Ryu. Ken comes first. <laughs> Why then the you can have you evil, Ryu. evil Ryu and you can just I don't put know. Akuma in? <laughs> just, yeah. yeah, exactly. Or Akuma. Yeah, but I still, I want Ken first. Like, I think Akuma and, and or evil Ryu could work as costumes for Ryu, but 
I think you gotta get. I think the character slot should go to Ken. Mm. The things mean, with Ken, I see Ken as an echo. Uh, I see Akuma as a semi clone. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, it'd be interesting to see what they go with. I, I think Ken's probably easier, um, but I, sh I kind of hope they go with Akuma now because he could have a, quite a different move set, even though they are mostly based off Ryu's. Um, but he, he has a very different feel to Ryu, so it'd be, it'd be very cool to see him make it into. And his final smash is custom built. <laughs> Oh yeah! <laughs> oh yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> the raging demon, boom, done. You got you got your final smash. Um, you know, and plus it fits the whole villains theme that we'd be getting in there. So Akuma would not be a bad choice either. Personally, though, if we're going for a Shota clone, I want Sakura. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Sakura's always fun and a little different. Get a little. Oh God, get Dan. <laughs> Time for a joke. Dan versus Pichu. Who wins? <laughs> yeah, I, I wish Soccer was more was more important or relevant because she's actually my favorite Street Fighter character. So I'm right there with you, Derek. I would mm. love to see Sakura in this game, but she's just not as important as someone like no. Ken or uh, or Akuma or yeah. it would it, it would have to be either Ken or Akuma, and it's more much more likely to be Ken. Yeah. Okay, now normally this is where we would end the discussion. In fact, that is where we ended the discussion before some news came out. Uh, and it ties in pretty well to what we were just discussing. But if you don't want to hear any potential spoilers involving leaked characters for Smash Brothers, tune out right now because we're about to discuss um, a potential leak for Smash Brothers that seems like it may be authentic. So let's get right to it. So hopefully you already turned off if you don't want to hear it. Um, so yeah, guys, so earlier today, uh, an image, or earlier yesterday, I guess, or yesterday, as you might say, <laughs> um, an image came out uh, that apparently shows off Ken in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. As part of the image, uh, we also have Ivysaur, Pichu, and Pac-Man all doing their taunts on the Moray Tower stage, and... At first glance, you know, it looks like to, it looks to be something that you could easily mock up. I mean, these are all characters besides Ken we've seen in multiple forms before, uh, except for Pichu, who hasn't been playable yet. And that's part of what makes this leak seem maybe authentic, in that this is a new angle on Pichu that, as far as I can tell, we have not seen before. We've seen him in this pose before, not from this angle. And in fact, that applies to this stage as well, which also has some other um, odd things about it, but I don't want to dive in too deep quite yet. Where do you guys stand in this leak so far? Uh, let's start off with you, Derek, because you notoriously um, pretty much not only despise leaks, but also don't really believe any of them either. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's, it's a safe path to go because so many of them end up fake. I, I, I get so many messages like, oh, what do you guys, what do you think about this leak? Fake. Yeah. <laughs> and then, sure enough, a day later, a few hours later, yep, it's fake. But this one, this one has some teeth. Uh, you think it, so? It's really wow. interesting. Yeah, it, it, I was again. I dismissed it at first, but you're right. It, it's when you start looking at the details, the really tiny details, that you start noticing um, how it actually has a chance. Like the, the like people compared uh, the clipping on uh, Pac-Man's feet through the stage. Like somebody got one of their buddies who is manning the demos at Best Buy to check this out and sort of position the characters in a similar way and sure enough it's clipping in the pretty much the same way in this spot and right. that's convincing in and of itself but then, then just you look at the creation of Ken it's a new model that people haven't been able to identify yet the the way it's all structured looks a lot like Ryu and who knows maybe they did a body swap <laughs> and just plucked off uh, Ken's head and put on Ryu's and had uh, colored him red or something like that but it's still so much detail to it and it's odd, but I'm actually feeling this is getting more and more real all the time. Yeah, I, I think I have to agree. I'm on team real with this one, just basically for all the reasons that you said, Derek. I mean, nobody seems to have been able to source this model of Ken yet. Um, you know, there's just there's no origin for it, so we can't quite figure out where it comes from. And the fact that Ken's own foot clips through the Moray Towers platform as well, in the same way that Reeves uh, has that we've seen in other screenshot evidence. So... I don't know. I, th I Like you said, Derek, I think this has some teeth. It's it's weird because it's so... I mean, especially after RC Omni's infamous Rayman leak, it's so hard to believe a leak because they can be so professionally well done, and it's so hard to tell, but I don't know. Just my, my gut feeling tells me, uh, uh, along with all the evidence that we've seen so far, that this might be real. There's definitely a lot of effort going into this. <laughs> yeah. like, even the um, the <laughs> render in the character icon... Uh, it's faded away, so you can't really see it because of where Pac-Man is, but that is uh, entirely new artwork. Uh, initially, I kind of mistook it for um, a prior fake from last week, but um, the pose of Ken's face is entirely different to that one. Like, he's looking downwards rather than straight at the camera. Mm -hmm. 
So if they did go for this fake, that's a lot of effort to create an entirely new render and then fade it out so no one can really see it. So, yeah, it, it uh, really would be. So yeah, I, I'm on Team Real with this too. I kind of dismissed it at first, but um, the, the evidence just keeps stacking up and I really can't see how this could be fake at this point. I mean, it just seems so convincing. Yeah, it's funny because at first glance, it really just it seems so easy to just brush off as another leak. There's so many of them now, but the more the deeper you look into this, the more plausible it seems. Now, of course, watch like it's gonna come out tomorrow. Like right after we post the discussion, <laughs> hey guys, I'm the leaker. I'm the guy who made this image. <laughs> but no, it really like everything does seem to be adding up, and there are some odd things about the image as well, which at first seem to disprove it, but almost in a way support the idea of it being real. Which again, if we're dealing with some next level uh, with some next level fakers here, maybe <laughs> maybe it's all planned. <laughs> um, but this is not, again, this is on the Norway Tower stage. Uh, we have not seen it, as far as I know, from this from this angle of this zoom level. And what's also odd is there's no uh, there's no ink on the ground where you would expect there to be because there's always ink on the match when it starts off. So there should be some right behind Ken there actually. Um, in addition, the timer is set to 2:30, which if it's mid match, it shouldn't be right at 2:30. It should have dropped at some point. But then there's a the whole fact that there seems to be a debug mo mode thing going on on the right side, which could easily explain these discrepancies. Um, and finally, looping back to the image of someone had their friend take at Best Buy using um, a similar poses, including having Ken stand in, or sorry, having Ryu stand in for Ken, the shadows appear to be identical, how they fall onto the stage. Yeah, the one thing that does kind of put me off is it's a very orchestrated image, like all the characters are taunting, someone was clearly uh, um, preparing to take this screenshot. Uh, this isn't something that someone just took during a match, during a test. Uh, someone must have uh, got like got a bunch of people to press the taunt button at the same time while taking this image, and that seems a little tricky to do. Um, but I'm still on Team Real because this is j it's just so convincing with all the evidence we've had from the Best Buy comparison. Um, but I just kind of wonder how this situation even comes up. Yeah, I and mean, I wanted to be clear too. Like, there's this still could be fake. Right. No one should take this as gospel mm -hmm. until it's confirmed as real. It's just as far as leaks are concerned, this is the most convincing I've seen in some time. Like, if it is fake, they've really yeah. raised the bar with this one. <laughs> no, they right. really have. I mean, Omni himself, as I said, he looked back at his initial reveal and was like, oh man, I could have did this, this, and this, and be like, man, if I did it nowadays, it'd be so much better <laughs> than what I did before, and that's a scary thought. Also, Omni's <laughs> weighed in on this, and he also thinks he's also on Team Real. Which yeah, says something. So, and there's a lot of prominent people who debunk leaks who are kind of on Team Real for this one. So, they, even that's just like, hmm... Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's definitely interesting. And the thing is, it makes sense. People were calling Ken for an Echo Fighter, I think, ever since the concept was out there. Because it, I mean, of course, it's yeah, he's the Echo Fighter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. he's, he's like the original. Fighter. Fighter. Yeah. yeah, like we were just talking about this before he became a thing, and you know. Whether it could be him or Akuma, well, apparently it's him. Yeah, that, that segue, that's the that, that whole discussion really acted as a perfect segue into this, by yeah. the way, which we didn't intend because we recorded that half of the discussion before we before we recorded this half. So yeah. it's funny, John, what you said about th this obviously being composed to some extent with everyone taunting. That actually adds like a sinister element to the story of this league because if it is legitimate then that means either one person, you know, did t the taunt on all four controllers at once, or there was more than one person <laughs> who was involved in wanting to leak this, which is kind of messed oh, up. Man. So, I don't know, but you're yeah. right, it is very composed, and that is that could be one point against it, but if it is real, that speaks to more than one element within Nintendo who's interested in leaking things, which is kind of unusual and, and a little concerning. I mean, it almost looks like, you know, it almost looks like it could be one of those stock website images where they have all the characters true. doing something at the same time, and so I don't yeah. know. That's mm -hmm. a good point. Yeah, Some go weird characters to put that. together, though, isn't it? Like two Pokemon, Pac-Man, and Ken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. With, and Pac-Man putting out Mappy. It's like, I don't... <laughs> There's no common theme here for one of those pictures. Right, but there's not yeah. always a common theme, I think. They often like mix and match characters like that. Although maybe not with taunts. Well, and if it was like a stock website photo, would there be debug information on the screenshot? No, there wouldn't Obviously be. Obviously I mean, not, yeah. but I yeah. mean, it's preparing for Right, 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 right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I still think, despite the potential pitfalls, I'm, I'm, you know, yeah, like you said, Andre, that it is very, you know, we have to make clear that it, it could still be fake, but... I'm leaning toward real with this one. Yeah, I'm, I'm like 90% 90, 90 real on this. Yeah. So, um, so I guess, it, let's assume it is real, just for the sake of the argument, so we can get past that. Because we all think it probably, we all think it has a good chance of being real. 
What do you think about this? This, this confirms, like, this verifies some of our hopes from, our, from the things we were just discussing. Uh, how do you feel about this? Like, how do you feel about how he looks? And, uh, I guess, what are your expectations for Ken being in Smash Brothers? I love it. I have a Street Fighter character that I like now in Smash Brothers. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, I'm not a Ryu fan, straight up. I just, he just bores me. But Ken now, Ken, oh. Ken to me is the interesting, cool version of Ryu, whereas Ryu is just kind of Mr. Fighting Game. Ken is like, you know, he's, he's based on Mr. Fighting Game, but he actually has an interesting personality. So I'm super happy to see him here. I'm really curious to see how they have differentiated him. I can guarantee you almost that if this is real and he's in the game, that his Shoryuken's going to have a flame effect to it. Like, that's going to set him apart mm -hmm. from Ryu because mm -hmm. that's his main thing. Like, Ryu's specialization is the Haruken. Ken's specialization is the Shoryuken in the sense that his is flaming. So I can guarantee you that'll set him apart. I'm probably wrong here, but I think he's based off his Street Fighter 3 appearance here. I don't think that's Street Fighter 2, and it's definitely not Street Fighter 5. Definitely not. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's quite interesting as well, and I think Ryu might also be based off Street Fighter 3, so that's definitely a, a consistent theme there. Yeah, you know, it does kind of look similar to his Street Fighter 3 appearance. I could see it also being 4, but as you said, it's definitely not 5, yeah. for sure. Uh huh. Yes, he has a total redesign <laughs> yeah. of five, which would be an interesting uh, costume. For I was going to say, I wouldn't be surprised if they actually included that as a possible alt costume for Ken. Oh yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, I mean, I mean, as we said, he is the Echo Fighter. It makes complete sense. I don't have a strong feeling one way or the other. I never really used Ryu or Ken as my main Street Fighter when I when I play those games. So I mean, it, it's cool to have him in here. It, it's uh, I, you can definitely see like right off the bat, Ash, you mentioned. Well, here's his one difference for him being an Echo Fighter, and that everything else will likely be the same. Like I do not expect him to be a fighter in the same vein as Isabel. He is most definitely an Echo Fighter. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I expect maybe like a smaller or weaker Hadouken to make up for his flaming Shoryuken, which will probably have added damage and knockback to it. But beyond like little things like that. I don't really expect too many differences. Yeah, I do want to see a bit more Street Fighter representation as well, like some more items or something, or more assist trophies. Um, but I guess just having Ken in there is more Street Fighter. It's more Capcom. Um, Ash already wants more Mega Man representation, like an echo of Mega Man. So uh, this kind of supports the idea, because Capcom are clearly up for it. Yeah, I, I think the problem with Mega Man, though, is that he hasn't, and, and I'll be the first to admit this even as a Mega Man main, he hasn't shaken out to be a particularly popular character because he has such a high learning curve. So it may be that Sakurai wow. was kind of like, well, is it worth the effort bringing Proto Man, who would be an echo of a character that already isn't widely used? I mean, as far, as far as items and other stuff that you can pull from Street Fighter, like, I, I think, uh, I, I can't really think of too many items from Street Fighter that you would put in this. Uh, although, I think it would be kind of cool if, like, Vega's Claw would come out, and you could actually oh, have yes. characters equip that. Vega's Claw would that be would I'd love, that, um... I'd love, great. like, a car just to come out. I was gonna say that! Yeah! That's yeah, I just would, I'd love to see a car just drop off the screen, or drop onto the screen, and then if, as long as you bash it, you get items out of it or something. Like, that would be so good! Yes! Yeah, that Like a Street awesome. Fighter themed version of Sandbag. Mm. Actually, I mean, yeah, it, it, it would just be kind of like a, a, a heavier box at that yeah. point, or like a more robust box. I love Basically. that idea. <laughs> yeah. Be all Except, like, what, be, what might be even better is if you're underneath the car, you just get screwed. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. get KO'd. <laughs> yeah, yeah, perfect. <laughs> uh, as far as, like, a potential assist, trophy uh probably chun -Li. yeah it would have to be chun -Li. yeah chun -Li's the go-to yeah. and i could see her just popping out and doing her lightning legs and, and just you know multi-hit juggling various characters like i could totally see chun -Li as an assist trophy yeah so that's that guys it seems it, it seems we have a plausible um new character here which i think we were all expecting anyway so i mean regardless of whether this leak is real or fake i think no matter what we're getting ken here yeah <laughs> yeah no doubt <laughs> and with that i think that finally brings us to the end of our weekly discussion so thank you so much for watching and of course stay tuned to game explain for lots more on super smash brothers ultimate including another discussion next week we'll catch you later bye <laughs>